Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Pradeep Bandari talking about a new endoresection device. Moving on to the next topic of this novel non diathermic uh, resector called endorotor. This is the patient who's had previous EMR and a recurrence of an adenoma on the EMR scar. You can see again, that can be very challenging. Uh, and when it is a scarred lesion like that, it's very difficult to resect by conventional EMR or ESD technique. Here you can see I've just injected, but there is no lift. The normal mucosa is lifting everywhere, but the polyp is not lifting. So this can be very high risk to use ESD knife or even the snare because if you use that, there is a high risk of getting the muscle in it. So this is the type of area where this novel device called endorotor can be very effective. So it's rotating and cutting at the same time and sucking the tissue. We go generally from left to right because the clockwise rotation of the blade allows this cutting if you go from left to right in a very nice way. Uh, see here? Only already in one sweep, we have managed to remove most of that adenoma. Uh, now we'll go a little bit of forward and backward movement with it to take the scar tissue and any residual adenoma. You see a little bit of oozing, that's normal, and you should never worry about that. Uh, here you can suck the fluid pool and uh, any residual scar or adenoma that you worried about. There you can see. We managed to again shave the scar a bit more to be very sure that there's no residual lesion left. Uh, it, because it's got very good suction, you can suck all the blood or fluid, anything that comes out uh, easily, just a little bit more shaving backwards and forward uh, to be very, very sure. And now a little bit of spray of water, you can see there is no residual adenoma left. Everything has been resected and that's job done. So uh, I feel being a non-diathermic device, this definitely reduces the risk of perforation. And Purestat being a synthetic gel, very easy to apply, helps both in controlling the bleeding as well as reducing the risk of delayed bleed. Great demonstration. Any questions, Chesri? Yeah, um, Pradeep, do you agree that the main risk of uh, bleeding is for large polyp uh, in the uh, proximal colon. Uh, and these are the lesions uh, where uh, Purastat uh, uh, should give uh, benefit to our patients. Or are there other indications for you except this? So, Cesare, sorry, because I've got the live stream on as well, so which is causing a little bit of interference in your question. Let me just uh, cut off my live stream if I can. Yeah, so the question is about the large uh, proximal polyp uh, because ah, yes. uh, the meta-analysis show that this is yes. the only mm, lesion that get they get benefit from clipping. Do this apply to Purastat, Pradeep? Uh, yes, uh, that is the area I think where we can make a big difference uh, by using Purastat, uh, because if we use Purastat in that area uh, where you have eight to 10% uh, delayed bleed rate, uh, Heiko Pohl study showed about eight to 10% delayed bleed rate in right colonic polyp. Uh, that's the area where it can be really beneficial. Technically very easy, catheter never gets blocked and the efficacy in the prospective series has been very good. We do need a randomized control trial and we're in the process of setting that up as a multi-center RCT to prove that this can be as good as CLIPS, then definitely it will be a fantastic agent. Yeah, uh, fully agree uh, Pradeep and we are looking forward to this innovation, but in the meantime, we go to Milan with uh, George Webster. George, can you hear me?